Illinois is up to 10th on Ken Palm. Wildly impressive win against Fairleigh Dickinson. 104 points is what the Illini hung on FDU. 104 to 71 was the final score. Uh, you and I both pregame mentioned we liked the Illinois total points under in this game. It was 94, which I still think was incredibly high. Like just on paper, a, a team that lost Terrence Shannon has to figure out what they are I, I, offensively, identity-wise. Um, I didn't care who they were playing or how fast the team plays or how little they guard. 94 is a ton of points. Didn't matter. We were wrong. Um, now, it, it looked good for the first 16 minutes of the game. Then Justin Harmon checked into the game, went four for four from three in a five-minute span and blew it out of the window. But uh, it's hard not to be overwhelmed by how impressive Illinois' players were stepping up in this game without Terrence Shannon. Yeah, I think it was it was wildly impressive. And also it it pointed to the fact that something we talked about all year is that the thing that makes us love Illinois basketball this year and what makes it impressive is outside of the star players that they have, they can they have like 10 to 11 legitimate guys who like weren't playing time. Damas, Garrier uh Ty Rogers, Dane Danger, Justin Harmon, Luke Goody. Like they have all these guys that warrant minutes on this team. And you see that they, even without Terrence Shannon, they can still do some things. They can still be a really good basketball team. They're still a factor in the Big Ten. They're still easily a top four team in the Big Ten, even without Terrence Shannon. And, you know, as I bet that team under total, uh, the one thing I can find solace in is that, you know, Illinois says hashtag everyday guys. Well, what ended this team total for me was hashtag my guys of the everyday guys. We had a dang game. <laughs> Everyone take a drink to that. We had a dang game. We had a Justin Harmon game. I I knew those guys could do it all along. Those are my guys. They always will be. Um, but, yeah, this this Illinois team is still a really good basketball team. And I honestly would like to hear your thoughts because you – were one going into the the preview. You talked about what Ty Rogers can do and what more he can do. And I thought he looked really, really good in this game as well. Yeah, I think you just saw like the best versions of a lot of guys in this game, which was crazy. Like it, it, yeah. It, it, you shouldn't be concerned about anything anymore. Like I, I think there was concern coming in. Like was Terrence Shannon actually that important as the gravitational piece that this team might be actually just an okay basketball team without him? No, this team's really good without him. And th this team's great with him. This team might be great without him, which is wild. Uh, Ty Rogers had 15 rebounds in this game. And Brad hit the podium. The first thing he said was, name me another point guard in the country that has 15 rebounds in a game. That's because Ty Rogers yeah. isn't a point guard, Brad. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> like, let's, let's, let's remember that part. But he's right. Like, it's really impressive that Rogers gave you 15 rebounds and five assists the first game without Terrence Shannon in 28 minutes and 10 points to go with it. Like, I, that was Rogers' best game of his career by far. Marcus Damask had 11 assists in this game. He had 11 assists in this game. He played the most minutes of the team. Like, so many guys just stepped up. Coleman Hawkins with 18 points and played within himself. The most important number for Coleman, zero turnovers in 29 minutes without Terrence Shannon. Like that's it was a flawless performance from Coleman. Um, the only thing you would have liked to see was Luke Goody making some threes. He didn't. But when Justin Harmon goes four for seven, why do you even need him? Like you got somebody else that stepped up. We saw DGL minutes. He had nine points in 14 minutes. Round of applause. Like, I, I've been wanting to see that kid contribute. We know he can do it individually, offensively. He did it tonight. You got hands, Perry, some minutes. He didn't do much, but he got minutes. Dane Danger would have had 38 points if he played 32 minutes in this game. He had 19 and 16 that's, minutes. That's every Super. That's every game, Gregory. It's crazy. And then Gary, like, we have, we're going up and down the list. Gary had a double-double. Like, <laughs> in 23 minutes, he had a double-double. So, like, what am I supposed to do? This whole team is loaded with guys who just contribute. And I'm wildly impressed uh, as a fan of a team that has no guys who contribute. This team's nasty. They are. But here we go. One second here. Oh, my Luke Goody. Cast it. Cast it. Reel it back in. Because that's this is what we got to talk about next. <laughs> uh, FDU is terrible. They are a terrible, terrible basketball team. Mm-hmm. Great performance. This is what they should do to this FDU team. With that said, baby asterisks in the left top corner of the box score. Would like to see this on a team that I wouldn't get minutes on. That's all I would like to say. I'd like to throw that out there. 
FDU was really bad. Yeah, I am ready to proclaim that I think Fairleigh Dickinson is the worst team in the country. They're 331st <laughs> on Ken Palm. They're not, they're not worse than – they're not worse. Actually, you think like they're worse than Stony Brook and Southern Indiana? Yeah, yep. I think uh, – look, they beat St. Peter's. They have some solid wins, truly. But um, that's the worst defensive performance I've seen from a college basketball team ever. And I do think that Illinois' players made it hard. <laughs> Right. Like Illinois guys showed up offensively, but like there was a play. Well, there was a play in the corner where like the, the ball should have been rebounded and it wasn't. And then they just like left Dane Angel wide open and let him get a wide open layup. Like that took 10 seconds to come together and they couldn't figure it out. Like I just I think some of the numbers are a little enhanced by how little resistance fairly dickinson intended to put up in this game like they've in their last three games card they gave up 87 to columbia 92 to fairfield and 104 to illinois that's a team that has no interest in defending and illinois took advantage give them all the credit in the world for it but um it was it was frustrating to say the least to watch it play out because we both faded illinois <laughs> it's fine and we, we end up looking stupid for doing so we did, but at the end of the day, this Illinois team is really, really good. I still feel, I, I I'm not, I, I actually feel just as good as to the fact that I'm not knocking them off the like. I think it's a two team race for the Big Ten title. Like I'm still leaving Illinois and Purdue up there as the two teams that are going to go at it. Um, I think obviously Illinois at, not at full strength will be at a disadvantage, but still. Really, really good basketball team. Still easily a top four team in the Big Ten. And still easily, to me, a second weekend team, to be honest with you. I think they're that talented still. Yeah, I feel the same. Um, I I do think, I'll say this, without Terrence Shannon, I don't think they can compete with Purdue. With Terrence Shannon, I think they have an argument that they should be 1A and Purdue should be 1B. Um, I just think, I think they're going to wear down over Big Ten play in a Purdue, or in a way Purdue won't if they don't have TSJ. Now, with that said, uh, we don't know. We got to wait and see. Um, at a certain point, we're going to have to do a longer conversation about Terrence Shannon and the, and the situation now that more facts are coming out. If you didn't watch Josh Whitman's press conference, uh, I, I could not recommend it more. I was so, so impressed with Josh Whitman and everything he spoke to. I thought the reporters in that room, everybody from the Illinois side did not let him off the hook. Like they asked the tough questions I wanted to hear. So everybody that was involved on the press side from Illinois, I give them a ton of credit. Uh, but the more and more facts that come out of this, it does sound like there's a chance Terrence Shannon might play again this season one way or another. Um, when we get more substance to whether that will happen or not, we will absolutely have another conversation about it. We did a whole, you know, immediate reaction to the charges being filed and you can watch that on our channel. Um, if we had to have that conversation again today, I do think it would have a different tone to it based on what is coming to light of this. Like, I mean, just call it what it is. Like the, there, there is a discrepancy on what happened here, like depending on whose story you believe. And uh, it's still as terrifying for all involved. It's still as serious as it was. But um, there, there is a real possibility here that just the facts that will come to light do end up making it so that Terrence Shannon gets to play again this season. We didn't think that was going to be the case last time we talked. Yeah, and I, and I think uh, speaking for both of us, we feel most comfortable letting those things come to light uh, instead of speculating on it. And obviously things have come to light and would change maybe the conversation the tone of it but with that said it's still a very serious situation regardless um but when the time comes i think that we will speak on it further but yep. i think it's fair to say that the tone would definitely be different um based on facts that have come up yep 100 percent. so all right there will be more discussion on this in the future i'm sure um congrats to illinois basketball though because without Without their star, without their leader, they looked incredible. And uh, this season is still extremely bright, regardless of what happens with Shannon going forward.